In the previous video, we looked at how you get members into your organizations. And if you remember, there's two options. You either add them to the organizations as individuals or manage them via groups. In the previous video, we created a group and assigned it to the home tech organization. But as you can see, we have zero users currently assigned with, associated with this organization. And you can see we've got one group. In this video and the next video, we're going to show you two ways you can import users into your system. The first being a registration form and the second being import using a CSV spreadsheet. So in this video, we're going to show you the registration form method. And if we just head over to organization toolkit and then registration forms, I have a number of these set up for each of the organizations I currently have. But in this video, I'm going to set up, set up a new one for home tech. And we find registration forms and I'll just show you an example of one of these here, um, are a great way to cut down your own administration when in, uh, bringing new users into your system. You allow users to self-register. They can put in their own details here. They can choose their own password. And what the organization toolkit does is it gives this sense of license codes. So you set up these license codes and you can set the number of them that are available. And as people use them, these license codes will dictate which groups they're added to or what role they get or whether they're added to certain organizations. And the, organize, the registration form method we find is just um, a, a big time saver because you're putting the onus on the people registering onto your system to do it themselves. And there's less issues with you setting people's passwords and less back and forth over email and things like that. All you would simply need to do is send them a link to the registration form and an access code and leave them to it and they can create their own account on your system. So here's one we've got for Eco Water, but I'm just going to create a new one here for Home Tech by going to add new registration form. And what we'll do now is talk through the settings of the registration form as we go and set one up. So for the title, I'm just going to call this um, Home Tech Registration. At the top, the first option allows us to associate this registration form with one of the organizations, organizations that we set up. So I'm just going to choose Home Tech. The second option is the registration form status. So what you might want to do is set up a registration form in advance of when it's going to be used uh, and not allow any registrations through it to start with. So you might want to set up, up an inactive registration form, for example. And what would happen if someone visited this while it was in this inactive state is that they would see a message saying, we are not accepting registrations at this time. And it would only be after you set that to active that the registration form would appear in full and allow people to register. So I'm just going to leave this as active for now. The introduction allows us to add a bit of text that will appear above the form. So if I just quickly switch back to that uh, eco water um, form that we were on before, this would be the information that appears here above the form. So it's just a nice welcome message that you can add um, and say, uh, you know, please enter your details below. And you can add images and maybe a, an onboarding video or something like that to this area if you wanted to. This field here allows you to show an, a message to anyone who's logged in when they access the form. So ordinarily, when people visit your registration form, uh, they will be logged out and they will be new to your system. And you have these two options. They can either register with an, an existing account, which allows them to put in a username and password and, and a license code and access the course or group that you are giving access to via the form, or they can register a, a brand new account and use that instead. But someone might already be logged into your system at the point that they first see the form. So if I look at what that might look like here, just using my admin account, we have an option for them to log out or a license code. So they can still register while they're logged in, but you might want to give some sort of message 
to them to say you're logged in are you sure you want to be logged in particularly if you're giving access to a group of people and some people might get a bit confused as to what account they're logged in as at any one time so we can add a message here saying you are currently logged in do you want to be um, and if we click publish and then view this um, form as uh, the logged in user i can see that we have that message there and this they would have the option to log out if they shouldn't be actually logged in to be able to access this form so that's just a message there that you can give to anyone who's already logged in at the point they access the registration form. This is where things start to get um, more detailed in terms of we create these license codes and these license codes allow us to do certain things with these people who register. So based on the license code here, you can carry out a number of different tasks with that new registrant. So we'll just create a, a license code to start with and call this um, ABC. And that will be the code that they enter when they register. And we'll have a look at some of the fields we have available. So we can optionally add the learners to a group, which is actually what I want to do here. I want to add those, anyone who uses this ABC code to the Rapid Files group. We can also add them manually to an organization. So if you recall, we can add users give users individual access to an organization, or we can add them to an organization via their group. If I didn't want to add someone to a group and left that blank, uh, but I wanted them to go just directly into an organization instead, I could use that, uh, this field here, and just put them straight into home tech. But what I want to do as part of this is add them to that group first, and in turn, give them access to the home tech organization. The next column allows us to say whether or not this person would be a group leader when they're added to the system. So by default, that will be unticked. Everyone who comes in would be a subscriber level or de depending on how you've set up your LearnDash WordPress platform, there might be a different role that you use, but it would be just the default role uh, for any user, new user on your system, unless you tick this, in which case they will become a group leader of any groups that you assign them to. We can set the number of licenses available here. So if you had an agreement with an organization that you were going to give them, say, 25 licenses, you can set that here. And this license code here would then only be able to be used 25 times. And once that gets to zero, that code would stop working. And the last field allows you to redirect to a specific, specific URL upon registration. So when that person registers, what would normally happen is that they are automatically logged in but you can also redirect them to a different url if you want to at the point that they are registered if you leave that blank what would happen is they'd end up back on your home page as the as the default so just to test that out what i'm going to do is click update and i'm going to open this registration form here in a new private window and register a new account. So I'll just say example user. I'll say example user one two three four five six at mailinator.com. And I'm going to just make a password here. And if you recall, the license code that was set there was ABC. I'm just going to click create account. What that does is gives me access. I'm automatically added to home tech and via the group that I've been given access to, I have access to these courses. So I can get started straight away. It automatically enrolls me into home tech and I'm straight on with my course. So that is one user that has been created there. And if we refresh the registration form now, what we'll find is that where we set 25 available licenses, that has now dropped to 24, and uh, that uh, one of these has been set as a redeemed license. 
So while we're in here, let's create a different registry, a different license code that does something slightly different. So I'll call this one CBA. And this one, I want to enroll. I don't want them to enroll onto a group, but I do want to give them individual access to home tech. So I don't want them to be added to the group, but I do want them to still appear within the home tech organization. And we'll set this one maybe as, as 10 license codes. I'll click update. And again, I'll just open this in a new private window and register a new account here. And I'll say map test no group one two three mailinator.com. And this license code was CBA. And I'm going to create the account. And again, what it's done is it's created me an account, logged me in, and it recognizes that I now have access to home tech. However, because I'm not part of that group, I don't have access to these courses here. So I'm not part of a group as part of this because we didn't set it as part of the license code. So those are the two options you have when you're creating license codes. You can use them to assign people to groups or you can give them money uh, access by our organizations or if you wanted to create a group leader account by this you know different code then you can do so you can create multiple license codes for each registration form and just to show if i refresh that page that cba license code that i just used there has dropped down one and we, one has gone into this redeemed license column if we ever wanted to add more to that and say oh this company's bought 10 more licenses all I do is increment that number, save it, and as simple as that, we've now added some more options to this uh, license code. A couple more options we have here are the options to include some additional registration form fields to capture certain information like addresses, telephone numbers, and things like that. By default, these will all be hidden fields we have the option to either show them as optional fields or show them as required, quite required fields. So if I just select a few of these at random, hide a few, show a few, set some as optional and required, these will appear on the form and we'll look at that shortly. And the last thing we can see here is we have the option to include a terms and conditions link. So say you have a terms and conditions page that you want people to view and tick a box to say that they have accepted it. You can include that here by just putting in an address. So I'll just put Google for now. If you do put something in here, someone, anyone registering would be required to tick that box to proceed with their registration. If I click update now, and then open the um, registration form in a new window there, what we find is that we have a certain selection of these fields that are made either required or non-required listed here. We've also got this terms and conditions box. And if I didn't um, tick that, then it would throw an error uh, and say that you, you, you can't proceed unless you have ticked that box. And if they click this link, for example, it takes them to the, the page that you would set as the uh, terms and conditions page in a new window. And the last thing we'll show you on the registration forms here is the welcome email. So if you want a welcome email to be sent to anyone who uses this form, registered via it, what you can do is set a welcome email subject and say welcome. And you can set the content of the message. It's great to have you on board. And then you could have some information about what they might expect on the course or, or the group, for example. And then click save. Uh, if you don't put anything in this, this these two fields, then no email will be sent. However, if you do put an email subject and some content, that email will be sent to anyone who registers. So that's the registration method of bringing users into your system. And it all pins around these license codes that you can use to create different types of registration on your platform. 
and you might have lots of different groups within an organization, for example, and uh, it just gives you lots of flexibility to be able to manage the users coming into your system in different ways.